All right. You know, we love talking sports. That's why it's called Sports Talk. Uh, we love talking about winners and losers and games and things like that. Unfortunately, much of our time these days taken up with lawsuits and conference realignment and the overhaul of the NCAA and settlements and back payments to athletes, etc. It's all happening before our eyes. And one of the things that is big that came out this week is that, of course, the NCAA settling this lawsuit, $2.8 billion settlement, and that's going to give players from years gone by a lot of money and it's also going to cut into how much they distribute to their schools over the next uh, 10 years as this thing's been going to be paid out over a 10-year period and that's going to take away some money but one thing that's cropped up is the involvement of private equity firms getting involved with college athletics and I guess investing in them millions of dollars in an effort to help them offset whatever losses they might be incurring or just getting involved in this particular business to make money. Only one person I could think of who could talk to us about this in plain language, and that is the money coach, Fran Halloran. He's been a player. He's been a coach. He's now a money man, and he joins us here on Sports Talk. Money Coach, how are you, sir? Hey, Phil, doing really good. Uh, Thanks for having me tonight. I appreciate the opportunity. It's great to have you with us. I've been trying to read up on this as much as I can so I have sort of a little bit of of working knowledge about what's going on and what can take place. But what does it mean about when we read about these a, a private equity firm? In fact, there's a guy down in Florida named Drew Weatherford, who's a former Florida State quarterback, He's on their board of trustees or has been on their board of trustees, and he's like he heads up a private equity firm that's worth, you know, millions and millions, and uh, he wants to get involved from a private equity standpoint with not just Florida State, but whichever colleges want to talk to them, and apparently he's talked to a whole bunch. Explain what this would mean. Is this a good thing for colleges? Can this be beneficial in some way? Well, Phil, I I don't know if it's good, but it's going to happen. And, um, you know, you and I have talked for a long time about the changing face of college athletics. Um, You know, seven, eight years ago when I was on with you every Thursday evening, I jokingly said then that sooner or later we're going to have this collegiate professional athletic association. And this is exactly where we're headed. And the reason for that is is quite simple. Athletic departments, universities, um, they're not business people. They pretend to be. They have um, a reputation uh, that would uh, make you think they're savvy business people, but they're not. They're educators, I mean, or coaches. Let me give you a perfect example, and I do not mean to besmirch Ray Tanner because I admire the man tremendously. Fantastic coach, but what the heck did he really know about being an athletic director director and running a multi-million dollar company? Nothing. Nothing. He knew nothing. And most college athletic departments and universities, for that matter, are in the same boat. They're not businesses that have ever had to produce a profit in their existence. Taxpayer money, ticket sales, revenue sharing from media deals, they've been allowed to spend, 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 spend. And they've been allowed to do it on the backs of the players that they've never compensated. Well, the chickens have come home to roost, Hmm. and now they're going to have to compensate these players, and this is why private equity is getting involved. And you mentioned Drew Weatherford. Drew Weatherford, he actually owns and operates Weatherford Capital. And he's the minor player in this because the major player is a fellow named Jerry Cardinal. He owns Redbird Capital. Mm -hmm. And they have joined forces to create what's called the Collegiate Athletic Solutions Company. And you alluded to this. 
they want to partner with up to 100 colleges and universities. They're going to plan to give between $10 million and $200 million. That's the, that's the, the, the vast span of the money they're willing to spend to each of these universities to help them capitalize on their intellectual property and to teach them essentially how to be profitable. And that's where this is all going because they cannot, the universities cannot survive any longer on the backs of the players. And we're not just talking about football and basketball. We're talking about everybody. They can no longer afford to keep up their institutions because they're going to have to pay the workers who have been making this money for them for years and years and years. Private equity saw this coming a few years ago. They've been creating these uh, small uh, businesses, if you will, to try to be ready for it. And now Cardinal and Weatherford, they're the first ones to say, here we go, we're jumping in with both feet. So it's both an exciting time because capitalism is coming to colleges and universities, but it is also a very scary time for anyone who is a fan of any sport uh, collegiately because it is literally, we think the NIL changed things. The NIL is nothing compared to what is about to happen when private equity gets involved. So when a private equity firm gives a school X millions of dollars, hundreds of millions or whatever, explain to us what do they expect back? What do they get out of it? What's their return? Well, yeah, normally private equity, um, and a private equity firm is a, is a pool of investors, all of which are what's called accredited, and uh, which means they make over a certain dollar amount every year. They have a net worth of a million dollars minus the value of their home. And they pool their money together with private equity, and private equity often partners with other institutions like banks and insurance companies, investment companies, and when they do, they buy shares normally of private companies. Um, and these, these companies then pay them generally some sort of fee, two fees essentially, a management fee, which is 2% of the investment they make every year, and then an incentive fee, which is generally about 20% of the profits. So the private equity firms are going to walk into these universities and they're going to say, we're going to inject you with this pool of money from our private equity pool. We're going to teach you how to be capitalists and really watch your bottom line and make money, real money, not just people handing you money, but we're going to teach you how to make money off your name, off your brand, things that they've never really had to do before. And they're going to get a fee for it. 2% is going to be their annual fee, probably, for what they've invested. And then they're going to get 20% of the profits. Hmm. That's the way they generally work their payment plans in um, private equity. And I would imagine it will be something very similar to this with colleges and universities. 2 and 20 is what they call it. Yeah. Talking with the money coach, Fran Halloran, while we're talking a leadoff home run for LSU, the Tigers lead. Six to five in the top of the fifth over the Gamecocks. So the schools need this. As I look back and and watch this thing play out, now they've got the lawsuit settled, and that's going to come out of the NCAA coffers, and they're going to have to cut back some on what they give to each of the schools percentage-wise to help make up for that money yet. They've got huge television deals, huge television contracts, huge payouts for the big schools coming as a result. Like, I think each Big Ten school is getting like over $50 million, and I think SEC schools are, are right there with that amount. So, um, and I just read a story. There was a story out today that the, uh, the Power Five conferences generated over $3.5 billion in revenue in the 23 physical year, according to tax records obtained by USA Today. The Big Ten led with $880 million. The SEC was at 852.6. million. 
The Big Ten distributed, I'm sorry, I had this number wrong, 60 and a half million to its 12 longest tenured uh, members. Uh, the SEC, the SEC, uh, bu- 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 SEC was in the 50 million range, I believe. I'm just going off memory. Each ACC school got about 45 million. So, my point is, my question is, if a league is making 800 already, you know, if a league is making 850 million dollars a year, why is why is that not enough? How, how is that not enough? To yeah, operate? it's a great question because yeah, it's a great question, Phil. But ultimately, it's because right now they spend every single dollar they get, mm-hmm. and they're about to have to pay players. And they have no revenue left because it's been an arms race in college sports for the last 10, 15 years. Bigger buildings, better practice facilities, better uniforms, better, 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 better. It, colleges and universities are absolutely the worst stewards of a dollar you can imagine yeah. because they have been allowed to be run essentially into the ground in, in most colleges and universities, if you don't spend every dollar that your department gives you, at the end of the year, you get that money taken away, and you don't get it back next year. So they spend down to the penny. And when I say these athletic departments and these universities are not well-run entities, think red, they're in the red all the time. Even with the revenues they have now, the billions of dollars, they still are in the red when you get down to it. Remember, they also take taxpayers' dollars. They also get tuition, and they still cannot stay in the black. And now there's going to be a brand-new expense called paying players in the budget. Yep. That's Revenue why private sharing. equity has got to get involved. Revenue it's got sharing. got to get involved. Yep. The players are – do not have a pipeline for where that money is going to come from, and hence private equity is coming to the quote unquote rescue. We got about two minutes left before we have to go to our break. You know about all that, um, yeah, yeah. And of course, we haven't even touched on what's ahead. All we think about, of course, are football and basketball players. But there's a Title IX people sitting out there just waiting to file lawsuits when all this is settled. Well, we're going to have to deal you know, with the Title IX issue, right? Well, let's call about let's, – let's really talk about Olympic sports, right? I mean, that's really what we're talking about. The Title IX, obviously, but all the other sports, believe it or not, are going to profit from this because you think about it. I mean, women's stand volleyball, beach volleyball at USC, they don't have much of a budget. But guess what? Private equity is going to come in and they're going to say, hey, you have this untapped resource – you have these fantastic female athletes playing sand volleyball. We've got to really work this so we can make it profitable. Remember, no one has ever been expected to turn a profit except football and in the last 15, 20 years, men's basketball, and now at certain schools, women's basketball. Everyone else has been able to be in the red because football revenue, media sharing, paid the rest of the bills. Private equity is going to get involved now, and they're going to teach every single athletic department how to monetize women's beach volleyball, women's tennis, men's um, 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 field hockey. I know they don't play field hockey, but you Mm -hmm. catch my trip. The most obscure sport you can think of, private equity is going to demand Phil, it's not a question of you need to. We hope you will. We're going to inject you with ten million to two hundred million. You are going to do what we tell you to do. You're going to become profitable. So in that sense, the the, the programs like well, let's just call them Olympic sports. They're going to benefit tremendously from this private equity injection of cash, and and eventually, and, and so will uh, the Title IX issue. I think the Title IX issue will work itself out as well with private equity. Money Coach, we got to run. Thank you so much. Okay. Great stuff as always. See you soon. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Fran Halloran, Money Coach. 
former football coach, former teacher, former football player, former police officer. You talk about living an exciting life, and he knows how to take a nickel and make it a dollar.